Hi, and welcome to my series on linear algebra for programmers. A lot of my work is game development and graphics programming, but if you're doing any sort of programming and you want to use linear algebra, this is a series for you. Um, we're going to start simple, but along with exploring some concepts, we are going to build up a C++ library, which you can use for any project you like. More on that later. For now, the topic is, is quite simple. It's vectors. So a vector, more or less, represents any sort of... Well, there's several definitions, but we can think of it for now as coordinates in space. So if I have a two-dimensional vector, one step horizontally, two steps vertically. Imagine I have an origin somewhere in space, and I just take one step across, two steps up, and that is my vector. Now, vectors have two interpretations. One is as a direction, and the other interpretation is as a point in space. So if I have another vector, for instance, let's say that this V is like a direction. We can go three steps across, one step up, something like that. And that's just the point hanging about in space. No problem. So this is all well and good. This is a bit of fun. But then the question is, how do we operate on vectors? Specifically, how do we add them, scale them, subtract them, stuff like that? It turns out this is actually quite straightforward. So let's say that I have some 3D vectors. I'll go one, two, three. Yeah, I know. It's not the best, not the most imaginative example. Um, let me go four, negative six, eight, something. Now, there is a geometric interpretation where we take um, one direction, one translation, one movement, and we add on another one, and then the direction from the tail to the head to the tail, however you want to read that, is the resultant. But the other way is to simply add them component-wise. So we have 1 plus 4 is 5, 2 and negative 6 is negative 4, 3 and 8 is 11, and so on. And this is very intuitive. This is pretty much what you'd imagine. And likewise, scaling a vector will work the same way very much like you imagine. So let's take a four-dimensional vector, something like that, multiply that with any sort of scalar, any real number, and again, it works component-wise. So we have four times a half is two, four times one is four, four times three is 12, four times negative a quarter is negative one and so on. And geometrically, we can imagine that as we have some input, that's our direction, and then we scale it out by a factor of four. So we just, our resultant is in the same direction, but just four times as long. If we were to take some vector somewhere and multiply it by a negative number, then the magnitude would change maybe, but the direction would also be reversed. So, so far, so good. The next question is, how do we implement this in code? Let's jump in. Okay, so here we are with Visual Studio ready to go. Now, I'm going to go from the ground up. I'm going to start from nothing and build the library. We'll just go create a new project. It'll be an empty C++ project. I'll just go back and we'll go to whichever folder we want to make this in. This is add, multiply, subtract vectors. Select that. Call this whatever you want. Um, I'm going to call it linear algebra. Okay, no problem. And here we have it. So we're going to start from scratch. I'll just click this button up here to show the actual folders and files and things. Make a new folder. I'll call this linalg. And inside there, we'll make a header file. Okay, so I'm going to future-proof this a little bit. 
by creating a namespace. Now this namespace is going to basically save these vectors into a specific region in, in our library, so to speak, a protected region, so that if in future we ever have any function names which are similar, it won't clash. It's a namespace, it's a namespace. And to start with, I'm going to implement a vec2, two-dimensional vector. So what I'll do is a two-dimensional vector has an X and Y component, and I'm actually going to represent that just like this. Now, I'll go back to my project, right-click there, make a new item. It really doesn't matter what it is. This is just going to hold my main function. So I will go, oh, why is that called header.h? I mean, I guess that makes sense, but we can do a little better. linalg.h. Okay, excellent. Uh, I should probably make this a little bigger. No problem. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just include There we go, so I'm including that header and write the main function. And the purpose of this namespace is I'll then be able to have a little more control over um, my vectors. Okay, so I've created a just a single vector with an X component of one and a Y component of two. C++ is pretty smart, it's filled those things in. Now what I can do is I'll just run this and make sure that it doesn't error out. Okay, excellent. So the next thing I might want to do is have a way to print these out to the screen. I don't know about you, but I'm often working on programs and I get about halfway through and I realize I've just made things hard for myself by not defining any way to print things out. So let's get on to that. We'll include the IO stream library so we can do printing stuff whoops and I will overload the IO stream operator now this is a bit funky but what this work what this does is it will return an output stream reference it's defined as the stream operator and as input we take um, yeah the stream that we're outputting to and the vector. So we could then do things like over here, we'll go, uh, whoops, I should probably include that. Not sure what's going on there, but this is the way this will work. So the stream operator, its left side is its left operand and its right side is um, the thing that's going in, and then it returns an output stream as well. Okay, so what I'm gonna go do is just, um, do the following. Maybe without the end line, change my mind. And okay, just put the comma there. Excellent. So this is what you'd expect for a two-dimensional vector. We have the open bracket, x coordinate, comma y coordinate, and now this is well defined. So we can now print that out to the cons. Oh, okay. Oh, of course. What am I thinking? What am I thinking? Uh, we'll just return that output stream. So we build it up and then return it. And this allows the operator to cascade as it were. Yep, there we are. Okay, cool. So this is how we can overload the operator and print a custom struct. Okay, no worries. So then the next question is, how do we add vectors together? Well, no problem. So when I add two vectors together, I produce a new vector. So I'll say, okay. Make a vec2. This comes from the adding operator. And I'll call the first vector u and the second vector v. And here's how it's going to work. So we'll say um, 
And I reckon we can even get away with this. There we go, and then of course we'll return W, but let's shorten this even more. Let's simply return that value without saving it to a variable. Okay, cool. So let's give this a test. I'll just pop back and I'll say, okay. Okay, excellent. So just to step through, I have this test. I've defined two vectors. I've just gone ahead, add them up, and then I'm just gonna print that statement out to the console. And it is giving what I would expect. Okay. So again, just in case that was too fast, what this is doing is simply constructing a new vec2, the elements of which is the sum of the um, inputs to the operator. So now I'll do the same thing, but with subtraction. And yeah, it's pretty much that. And I'm going to do multiplication. But now with this multiplication, it's scalar multiplication. So I'll have, whoops, a float A. And now what this should be is simply a times the x-coordinate and a times the y-coordinate. But then note that order, adders, uh, order matters with the operator. So when I have u, v, that's defined as u minus v. When I have a times v, that's defined, I also need to go back and define v times a. No problem. I'll just swap the order around here. And yeah, same formula. Excellent. So now I'll just go ahead and do a bit of this. So let's try doubling W, maybe four times. Okay, excellent. So I'll just apply that operation and what do we get? Yeah, that's what I'd expect four times each element. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so now what I wanna do is, mm -mm, thinking, we'll do the subtraction. Let's go u minus um, v times two. Alrighty, let's go for it. Nice, okay. So again, um, one minus six is negative five, two minus eight is negative six. Okay, that's fine. Right, so at this point, I'm pretty happy. We've got this, it's working. Let's talk about performance. Now I went back and forth on this a bit. Should I include this, the following or not? And I, in the end, I decided I would include it because it's a little technical, it's a little weird, but it is important to be exposed to things, even as a beginner. So it turns out that our computer can add and subtract a whole bunch of numbers in one operation, in the same time that it would take to add two numbers together, we can add a whole bunch. The way we access that, it's called SIMD by the way, is we go include intrin, that's compiler intrinsics for SIMD operations. And now I'm gonna cheat a little bit on this VEC2 and I'm actually gonna store four elements in it. And in addition to those four elements, I'm gonna store 128 bits. So that's enough for four floats. So that data type is M128, that's 128 bits. I'm gonna call this, so right now, um, these four floats and these 128 bits, they're in a union, which means they are occupying the same location in memory. It's like they're aliases for the same data. So everything will still work the same way. I can run this 
and all that stuff is fine. But then the real performance comes when I start to add things together. So if I go down here, I'm going to pass in a whole chunk of 128 things. And the way I do this is with um, this function, it's mm add ps for packed scalar. And my inputs are the chunk for u and the chunk for v. Psych, it actually does work. All we need to do is declare the chunk up front. And let me just check that because it might actually not be working. Oh, no, it works. Okay, excellent. Very cool. So let me just re uh, let me just recap that. So before we had just two floats for each of these. Now we can use up to four floats. We're only going to use the first two. But the benefit of this is we can add two floats together in one step. Now we can keep working here. We can go return, uh, subtract. Okay, and then down below, I want to multiply the vector by A. And I want to multiply every element of the vector by A. So what I can do is multiply packed scalar. For my A coefficients, I'm going to go call the set1 function. And what that does is it takes a float as the input and it sets four floats at once. So think of it like this is a, a set of four floats. And now this will take all the stuff that's in the vector and multiply it, each element by A in one go, if that makes sense. So I know this stuff looks a little funky, but it does improve performance. For this reason, I'm keeping it in. Yep, and again, same formula. So hopefully that's looking okay. I'll give that a go and we can see that, in fact, it is giving the expected results. So now just to extend things, the same rules apply to VEC3s and VEC4s. So I can go ahead and duplicate all of this. And again, this is a little funky because I probably don't have to go to this extent, but why not? Let's just go ahead and do this. There we have it, it's the same stuff. I mean, really, this vector is storing everything up to four floats. So we could have done exactly the same single operation, but I do want to keep individual VEC2, VEC3, VEC4 data types for reasons which will be revealed later. Perhaps reasons that I myself don't even know, jokes. So what I'll do is I'll actually leave it at leave it at this point. I'll leave it as an exercise to finish this off for VEC4. It'll be the same. And to write a bunch of test cases, just to convince yourself that this math is checking out. Don't want to make this video too long. So that was it for today. The task was to add, multiply, and subtract vectors. And we did it. And then we used compiler intrinsics to make it more efficient. I hope you had fun. I hope that was all right. Gets a little funky, but um, yeah, have a good one. All the best, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.